Hey, welcome back everyone to your MySQL tutorial series. I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and this video is going to be about many-to-many -many relationships. Now, I highly recommend you watch the previous video, which is one-to-many relationships, because this video is going to build off of that video a little bit. The reason I'm telling you that is because this is the exact same setup we had in the last video, and I'll describe this just a little bit. Essentially, we're trying to make a website where you can make auctions and people can buy stuff, right? So we have listings and a user can post as many listings as they want, but one listing can only be listed by one person. So for example, this specific listing is only allowed to be owned by the user with the ID of 9 or the user with the ID of 10 or 11, but not more than one, only one. If you think of some popular auctioning websites, it's generally considered normal that an item being sold is owned by only one person. Now there might be a couple out there where you can joint ownership something or joint list something, meaning this item could reference two people, for example. In that situation, there's kind of like a co-ownership, meaning when the item sold, the revenue earned is split amongst people. That might not be common on an auctioning website, but it might be common on a website where you sell courses or something along the line of that because a course might be authored by multiple people and the authors might split the revenue. So this might not apply directly to an auctioning site, but ultimately that decision is up to you or the business telling you to design this thing. That's because if you wanna make an auctioning website where you can have multiple people own a single item, you go ahead and do that. It's your website, it's your application. There's not rules saying you can't do that. So that being said, that's what we are going to do in this situation. We are going to make it to where a specific listing can be owned by multiple people. Right now we have it set up as a one-to-many relationship, but as you can see, we're talking about many-to-many, -many, so we need to alter this a little bit. Now, I want you guys to think about this really hard. If you're going to try to force a listing to be owned by multiple users, you're going to run into some serious database design problems. How would you even go about doing that? Let's think of some ways. Let's go with the pizza rolls. We could throw in another user in here. We could add a comma and throw in the user with the ID of eight. But this is going to break our atomicity or atomic rule. Now we have two values for one column. That is not okay. So you might think, hmm, let's add another row. So now we have the same item with a different user ID, but there's a problem here in that we have a repeating primary key, which is not acceptable. The other problem we are going to have is that now we have this pizza rolls in here twice, and that's redundant. Now this column is probably not marked as unique. If it was, then we couldn't even do this, but the chances are it's not, so therefore we're just going to have duplicate data. And just by chance, let's say we could do this, and one time this was updated, this one might not get updated. And then we have conflicting data. So bad design like this leads to conflicting data, and that's really bad. Nearly any time you have a problem like this, the solution is to add a table. <laughs> I know it sounds like it could cause problems just adding tons of tables, but I'm serious. So let's add a table and see if it works. What kind of table are we going to need? The table is called an intermediary table. And this table is going to go between these tables and just be like whoosha, and it's going to separate them. This is going to allow us to store a many-to-many -many relationship in a database. So what we are going to do is put a new table here that's going to be in between the users and the listings. Now this table by convention is going to have the first table singular, so user underscore the second table plural, listing. And this is going to make associations from the users to the listings. So the only columns we really need in here are the user ID and the listing ID. Now let's fix up this crap. <laughs> First, let's get rid of that row. We don't want that at all. And then I'll put this up here so we know that we wanna put two of those over here. So the first one, let's just go row by row and we'll show how to convert this data. Now, obviously you're going to want to design this right from the beginning so that way you don't have to move data from tables to tables that's just bad <laughs> so the first thing we're going to grab the listing id one and associate that with some user let's go with nine now you can see this is going to allow us to have multiple users because we can just add a new row and have the same listing id and a different user id now these columns are not labeled unique but actually the whole combination 
of both of the columns can be labeled unique. That means we can have 9, 1 and 8, 1, but we can't have 9, 1 again because that would mean both of these as a group are not unique. So that means in this table, we can just get rid of this. And then let's add another row. We'll have two, user nine, three, and user eight. As you can see, we're not going to need to store the user in here anymore because all of that information is found in the user listings table. So we can just get rid of this entire column. Now let's draw lines just to show how these are connected and that will help us visualize this. So eight goes to eight and to eight. And then nine goes to nine and nine. Then on this side, one goes to one, to one, two to two, and three to three. Now this will help you visualize how we broke up this many-to-many -many relationship. We actually broke it up into two one-to-many relationships. For example, look at this ID. On this side, we have one ID that's referenced twice. And it kind of goes in multiple directions this way, like this. And that is actually how you draw a one-to-many relationship when you're designing tables. It'll look something like that, except prettier. <laughs> you will never have it where you have an ID breaking off like this. Because you can see here now, it's backwards. And we have many-to-many -many. again. We do, so that will never happen. We fix the problem of many-to-many -many by breaking it up. So this is a pretty good summary of how you design a many-to-many -many relationship. You just need to break things up into three tables. In the next video, we are kind of going to conclude all of the relationship stuff and just go over a quick overview of how to design each relationship. Thanks, guys. Hopefully this is helpful. If you enjoyed it, please click like. And as always, click subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.